Aloha. Welcome to the last class of Healthy Habits. And today we're going to be talking about giving. This class is going to cover ways that we can give of ourselves to help other people, ways we can give of ourselves, what we get, the benefits of it, and making sure that we're giving in the right attitude. Let's open in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being here with this class, and I pray that you'll help me to deliver your word with your clarity and your vision, Lord, and open our hearts and minds to receive and apply everything you have for us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, today, this is lesson five, and again, I'm Coach Vicki. Thank you so much. And this is um, Healthy Habits. Now, I hope that you are have really committed to our promise and our prayer that we're going to commit ourselves to the habits necessary for our spiritual maturity. We don't want to stay. We don't want to stay infants. We want to grow mature, uh, spiritually mature in the Lord. And we're going to continue our studies today by following these habits that will help keep your commitment to grow spiritually. Now, giving of ourselves. And um, the first thing is giving of our time. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, it says, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as the unwise do, but making the most of your time, because the days are evil. That's a strong warning. Make the most of your time, because these days are short and evil, and we don't want to get lost. We don't want to get lost no, stay connected, always pray, never stop praying. Now, 1 Corinthians, the second thing, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, give of your talents. A spiritual, we're talking point to give of your talents by looking in 1 Corinthians 12, 7. It says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. If we all had the same gift, it wouldn't be any help, right? If we all did the same thing, it wouldn't help each other. So we're all given that different gift for a reason. For a reason. Now, this brings us to um, n uh, number three. Give of your treasure. Another way to give. Matthew twenty three twenty three says, If your gift is giving, give generously. Romans 12.8. give you the wrong verse again. Sorry. Romans 12.8. If your gift is giving, give generously. And Matthew 23.23, 23, it says, yes, you should tithe. And you should leave more, the more important things. You should, shouldn't leave the more important things undone either. Yes, you should tithe. But the more important things that you're talking about, is your other spiritual gifts connecting together. <clears throat> we'll talk more about tithing in another lesson. Now, um, there's seven, um, at this point we're going to talk about the seven benefits we get when we give. Remember, when we give, we get back. Number one, giving makes me become like God. You might say, how? Well, look in John 3.16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Well, if he can give his son, surely we can give to our fellow brothers and sisters, whether our time, our smile, our help, our money, whatever it might be. Help. Prayers. God's word. God will lead you what you should give. Now, giving is the antidote to materialism. Materialism is when you want everything the world is offering. You want the bling. Okay? Well, giving is the antidote to that. Now, it tells us in 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19, it says, Command those that are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put hope in their wealth, which is so uncertain. But, to put hope, to put their hope in God, who richly provides with us 
everything for our enjoyment. Now command them to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Now remember, when he's talking about um, all of this too, share your talents. He's not talking about merely finances, whatever talent the Holy Spirit has given you. Amen. Now, giving strengthens my faith. In Luke 6, 38, we're going to see this. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. Honor the Lord by giving him, this is your tithes, giving him the first part of your income. And, he w and then it comes with a promise. It says, if you honor the Lord by giving him the first part of your income, whether you see you have enough or not, give him the first part. And he has a promise. And he will fill your barns to overflowing. That was Proverbs 3, 5 and 9. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5 and 9 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of your income and he will fill your barns to overflowing. And look with me in Luke 6.38 where it says, Give it, give, and it will be given to you. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And I found this so true in my tithing. Clark and I tithe no matter what our income. Back in 2015 and 16 when we were when we were homeless and we didn't have any income at all, if someone would give us even $20, we tied that $2 back because we knew God was going to bless us. And he has, and he will continue to do so as long as we're faithful with our tithes. It tells us, for the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Amen. Giving is an investment in eternity. Now, in 1 Timothy 6, 18 through 19, it says, Give happily to those in need, and always be ready to share whatever God has given you. Again, it's whatever your talent is. By doing this, you will be storing up real treasures for yourself in heaven. Whatever your talent is, remember to tithe your 10%. God will bless you. It is the only safe investment for eternity. Again, 1 Timothy 6, 18-19. Giving blesses me in return. We talked about this, but look in Proverbs eleven twenty five. I'm sorry, uh, Proverbs 22, 9. It says, a generous man himself will be blessed. And Proverbs eleven twenty five says, a generous man will prosper. He who refuses others, or, sorry, refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Now the next thing is giving makes me happy. In Acts 20, 35, Jesus says, there is more happiness in giving than in receiving. That's so true. Now the third point is, the last point is to make sure we give with the right attitudes. We have to give with the right attitudes. Give willingly. 2 Corinthians 9.12 says, For if the willingness is there, your gift is acceptable to what you have, not according to what you don't have. That $2 tithe that God and I were able to give on our $20 that month, those months, blessed the Lord and those that received it just as much as the $2,000 tithe from those that make much more than we ever will. So, whatever it is, God will bless it if you give it with a willing heart. 2 Corinthians, uh, again, that was 2 Corinthians 9.12, and then it says 1 Corinthians 9.7 Each one should give what he has decided in his own heart to give. 
and not reluctantly or under pressure. You know, this kind of reminds me of a story. There was a little girl once who, whose father told her she was disrupting the class. Sit down. Sit down and be quiet, he kept telling her. Finally, the little girl sat down, and she looked very sternly at her father. She said, I am sitting down in my body, but in my mind I'm dancing. Well, that's a disobedient heart, and our Lord judges us on our heart. So make sure that we do it willingly and cheerfully, like we're getting into next, for God loves a cheerful giver, 2 Corinthians 9, 7b. Amen? Give sacrificially. What does that mean? Well, 2 Corinthians 8, 3 through 4 says they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing this service. Amen. And then give expectantly. Expectantly, it says Second Corinthians nine six. Remember this: Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. That was Second uh, Corinthians nine and six, and it also look with me in Second Corinthians eight five, where it says, "They first gave themselves." To the Lord. That's the first step. Make sure you've given all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul. Be ready for Him to use you in all of His ways. You will be blessed beyond measure. Amen. Amen. Now, healthy habits, personally and corporately. Now, Psalms 33:11 says, "But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever." The purposes of his heart through all generations. So, that's our, we need to remember that. The whole point of everything we do, the whole point of everything we see, the purposes of God's heart through all generations. His plans stand firm forever. Amen. And then Acts 13.36, it says, For when David had served God's purposes in his own generation... He fell asleep, and that was what in God's design. He allowed himself to be used for God's purposes, and when God was finished, he was allowed to sleep and go to be with Jesus. Now, what were the, the four things for healthy habits? The first one was our, our second class, Bible study and prayer, not just on the weekends, on church gatherings, Although, don't neglect those. Those are so important, too. You also need, number two, fellowship with others. Small, midweek life groups that can keep you, keep you connected until church service on Sunday. Amen. And then the third point was growing spiritually. And you'll do that the more you follow our Christ Visions International Ministry classes that we're posting on our website. ChristVisions.com. Look on our classes page. There's a lot of classes there and there's more posting all the time. And uh, we encourage you to follow us and to give us, our, our, give us your feedback. Join for our um, email list through our website so that you could be updated. And then um, the last thing is giving of yourself. Make sure you find your ways of giving according to the gifts the Holy Spirit's given you. Now, our next class that we're going to begin soon is the Full Armor of God. And I look forward to helping you suit up for that on our next class. God bless you. Our prayers are with you. Thank you so much for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you next time on um, Christ Visions International Ministries. This is Coach Vicki Francois with love.